Is anyone ready to tell us? Which terms we need? Say it again. Three times eight is twenty-four and negative fourteen. And I need what? Very good, excellent. It doesn't matter how would the order you write it in. So negative twelve. Negative 2 or negative two and negative 12 or negative 12 and minus 2 uh, does not matter. So what would you factor out from the first two? Good. What is left in parentheses? What should I get from the other two? And now I look. Four. Careful. Four will not work. Negative four will work. So then this is 2x in front. What is the common factor that I have to pull next to 2x? Excellent. And in parentheses? Perfect. This was just factoring, nothing else. Good. Um, back to chapter 11. Let's look at, at another um, inequality. I'm still in the review section. So um, let's say. Thirty-seven on page seven hundred eight, and that is um, x plus five, x minus six, x plus two, less than or equal to zero. Is this um, inequality chart ready or not? Because mm -hmm. I have to study the sign. So it requires a product or a ratio on one side and zero on the other. Is the chart ready or not? Yeah, it's a product on the left and zero on the right. So x is the variable in the problem that goes from negative infinity to infinity. Then x plus 5 then x minus 6, then x plus 2, and then the product, x plus 5, x minus 6, x plus 2. Which numbers go in the chart? Negative 5 is good. Is the first one from left to right. Next one. Very good. And the last one? Excellent. So x plus 5 has to have a 0 somewhere. Under, correct. X minus 6 must have a 0 somewhere. Very good. And then x plus 2 has to have a 0 under. Good. What happens with the product when x is negative 5? Perfect. What happens to the product when x is negative 2? What happens to the product when x is 6? Since all these three functions are linear functions with a positive slope, negative, zero, positive, this is what I'm going to copy. Negative, zero, positive. Negative, zero, positive. Negative, zero, positive. And I see that this chart has how many subintervals? Yes, one, two, three, four. So on the first subinterval, perfect. On the next subinterval, 
on the next, on the last. Good. Now I'm asking myself, what am I looking for? Which sign I need for the entire product? Negative. negative. So it's negative here, which means this. It's negative here, which means this. So now the solution. X in the interval. Very good. So let me review the topics one more time, and let, maybe I should write them down for you. Solving equations. Quadratic equations, I would say, using four different methods. Quadratic formula, completing the square, uh, taking square roots, and factoring. And yes, you're right, the substitution method is used for quadratic in form. Equations that are quadratic in form. Okay. Then, war problems. All of them involve a quadratic function. Inequalities, polynomial and rational inequalities. Graphing, a quadratic function. Uh, discriminant. and how it reflects into the graph of a function, of a quadratic function. Will it say on the test? I'm sorry? Will it say on the test, solve this equation by this method? I will ask you to solve by all four methods, yes. But just once. Then everything else, you can choose the method you like. Correct. Correct. I can't think of anything else. Solving equations. Solving inequalities that are not linear, war problems, uh, graphing, substitution, and those four methods. I can't think of anything else. Yeah. Yes, very good. I'm sorry? Polynomial or rational inequality? So this was a polynomial. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about the discriminant. So you can get a question something like, uh, do not solve the equation. Do not solve, but determine the discriminant and state how many solutions will the equation have. So don't solve. No, you have to find a discriminant. You don't know till you find it. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. It's what under the square root in the quadratic formula. So that's a discriminant. You don't know yet. You have to calculate it. So that will be what? 16 minus? Yes. And now you can tell that this equation will have When the discriminant is zero, one real solution. There is no plus or minus. You only have negative b over 2a, and that's also the vertex. So one real solution. Sure.
Let's find the discriminant for this equation. We are not asked to find the solutions. We are only asked to find what type and how many solutions that the, does the equation have. Say, say it again. So b squared minus 4ac, yes, is 36 minus. So this is good. What would you conclude? Two distinct real solutions. Two distinct real solutions. Um, uh, if you remember, I don't. I no longer have that uh, last, but I can pull it up. Correct. Oh, okay. That's Yes. It was zero. It was zero. So that's what I think um, that you'll be able to finish very quickly, this test, because there is not too much going on here. Yes, let's look at another graphing problem. So well, let's uh, say on page uh, 703, Let's say 44 on 703. And that is f of x equals x squared minus x minus 12. What do I have to find first? <coughs> Good. So let's find uh, the shape. But you can start with the vertex, no problem. Yes, it has a minimum because A is 1. Very good. How do I find the vertex? Negative. B is negative 1. 2 times A is 2. What is the answer? Very good. So I have the x coordinate is 1 half. How do I find the y coordinate? Very good. So then f of 1 half equals 1 half squared minus 1 half and minus 12. How much is 1 half squared? Very good. Minus 1 half and minus 12. What is the least common denominator? Very good. Adjustment for the second fraction? 2. Adjustment for the third fraction? 4. So what should I write at the top? So then, this is negative 50 plus 1 is negative 49 divided by 4. So the y coordinate is negative 49 divided by 4. Good. Now, the next step is what do I have to find now? Very good. X intercepts. Do they exist? I don't want to waste my time. Do the X intercepts exist? Correct. Do they exist? Yes, because the minimum is because the minimum value is negative. negative 49 over 4. It's coming from positive and has a minimum that is negative, so it must cross the x-axis. Good. How do I determine the x-intercepts? I have to write something. 
y equals zero. Y equals zero, very good. So then x squared minus x minus 12 equals zero. And yes, I will factor up. In other words, I will completely factor, I meant to say. So how do I completely factor this? Excellent. So then x equals x equals. And the solutions are negative 3 and positive 4. What are the x-intercepts then? Very good. And? Very good. What is the fourth step? That's 5. I have one more step before 5. Very good. How do I determine the y-intercept? Very good. When x equals 0, then what do I have? Very good. So y equals negative 12, so 0, <coughs> negative 12. And now you're right, 5 and 6. Five is the axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry? Excellent. X equals one half axis of symmetry. Since it's a minimum, what is its minimum value? Minimum of, of uh, f of x is negative 49 over four. Ready? Which is uh, roughly negative, not roughly, it's negative 12 and 1 fourth. So I know I should be up here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and a little bit. OK. So x equals uh, 1 half. And y equals negative 49 over 4 is somewhere here. The axis of symmetry, x equals 1 half. Uh, the x uh, intercepts, so uh, this was negative 12 and 1 fourth. So this is negative 12, the y intercept. And the x intercept, negative 3, 0, 4, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 3, right here. I'm going to try to make it as symmetric as possible. So this is the graph of f of x, x squared minus x minus 12. Can anyone give us the range? Very good. Indeed. What else do you think we should um, go back to from that list? Is there anything that you think that you may have difficulties with? Or simply you just want to see it again? Oh, yeah. Solving quadratic equations by fact by the quadratic formula, completing the square, taking square roots, uh, factoring. Then substitution, equations that are quadratic in form. War problems, polynomial rational inequalities, graphing, and the discriminant, the discussion on the discriminant. By taking square root? Sure. So back to 11, 1, I believe. So this is in, on page 660. So let's start with uh, 25 on 660. x plus 3 everything squared plus 8 equals 0. Very 
good. I have to clean it up. So I have to have x plus 3 squared equals negative 8. It's not set up for taking square roots just yet. I can cannot take a square root from a sum. Good. So then, so now what do we do? Very good. Now we take the square root from both sides. The left hand side, I probably said that. I'm sorry. I apologize if I didn't hear it. Right. Let's take the square root of negative 8, bless you, on the side. And I know that this is. Very good. Times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So how do I simplify this? That's it. So finally, x equals. Good. Is there anything else that you would say I want to see it again? Anything else? Yes, of course. Let me make one up. Now let's say um, x negative x plus 1, x uh, plus 3 over x plus 2, x minus 4, greater than or equal to 0. Is this, um, in case you want to use the chart, is this chart ready? Yes, because we have no sum. There is no sum or difference of terms, right? They are all products or ratio. Good. So it's chart ready. How many factors do I have to write in the put in the chart? Five indeed. X is not counted because X is the variable in the problem, so it's negative infinity to infinity. Can anyone dictate the first factor that needs to be put in? The first factor. The first factor is x. The next factor is the next factor is the next factor is and then x minus 4. And at the very end, I'm going to say ratio because I ran out of room. So now please tell me which numbers would you select to put in the chart at the top in order from left to right. Negative. One. So I will have to start with negative 3 first from here. Then the next one is negative 2 indeed. Then the next one is, careful, if you put negative 1 in here, you will get 2. You will not get 0. So when I solve the equation negative x plus 1 equals 0, I get negative x equals negative 1, so x equals 1. I have 0 first. 0, 1, and that's it, and 4. Good. So now there must be a zero in the first row. Under 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 zero. There must be a zero in the next row. Under perfect. Must be a zero somewhere for x plus three. There must be a zero for x plus two. And there must be a zero for x minus four. Under 4. Good. So now, what happens if x plus 3 is 0? Perfect. No. Because there is a denominator. So what happens when x is negative 2? When the denominator is 0, the fraction is not 0. Undefined. When x is 0, 
perfect. When x is 1, and when x is 4, undefined. Good. So now let's analyze which ones will have this sequence of signs and which ones will have this sequence of signs. Exactly. So it will come from positive and go to negative. Everything else has a positive leading coefficient. They will all follow the same negative to positive. Okay, and I see one, two, three, four, five, six subintervals. Can anyone give us a sign for or on the first subinterval? Yes, one, two, three, four negatives, so it must be positive. Can anyone give us a sign on the next subinterval? One negative, two negatives, three negatives. If we multiply them or divide them, the sign will be? Negative. On the next subinterval, yes, there are two negatives. On the next subinterval, negative, there is only one negative. On the next subinterval, careful, positive. And on the last one, negative. Now I look here and decide what to pick. Yes, all the positives. I couldn't have said it better. So I see positive here, check. I see positive here, check. I see positive here, check. Only positive number is greater than or equal to zero. So then I need to write this solution, final solution. Can anyone t dictate x in the interval? Parenthesis or bracket. Good. Union. Negative 2, 0. Parentheses or brackets. I cannot ever close at negative 2 because it's undefined. So this must be a parenthesis. I must close at 0 because of the equal symbol. Union. One comma four. Exactly. Anything else? 